you can go aggressive much more often. Oh, what? <laughs> uh, I don't know what that fireball was. Yo, what's up guys? In today's video, I'm going to be playing a deck that 9 out of 10 players don't play correctly. So if you guys enjoy the video, please make sure to like and subscribe. In today's video, I am going to be using the Remyeli deck, Minor Wallbreakers, Magic Archer, Tornado. And I do feel like most people don't really play this deck correctly. Um, Not many people know how to actually use this deck to its highest potential. I feel like only like Remyeli and maybe a few other people. I'll just Wallbreakers here in the middle for that prince as well. I feel like a huge mistake I see people making is not wall breaker kiting enough and also not activating their king tower. With this deck, the most important thing that you can do is activate your king tower. Almost all of your defenses are going to be backboned off of having your king tower activated. With this deck, you kind of have to overspend in elixir to get damage and you rely on very strong defense. Like for example, with this deck, you're going to be like magic archering nearly anything that comes at the bridge, like skeletons, goblins, literally anything. So you're going to need a, the king tower activation to help you out on defense to get positive trades on defense to be able to make negative trades on offense. Just going to minor wall breakers here. Try to catch the dark prince. Nice. I should get a wall breaker connection. Nice. <laughs> See, I take a negative trade right there. But I'm going to need to get some positive trades on defense or obviously I'm just going to lose the game. Um, having the King Tower activated is really easy to make positive trades on defense. It just makes it much, much simpler and easier. Just going to log there on the Spear Goblins. I'm not down any Elixir. We're about equal if you count the Magic Archer down. I'll just Tornado on the Goblin Gang. He does have uh, four, four more than me, but I do have the Magic Archer down. He only has two more than me now. And... Another thing I think people do wrong with this deck is they usually miscount the elixir because I quite often see people overspending on defense when it's a bit better to just take some damage than to keep spending elixir just so you're not in a worse spot in the later game. I'll just pre-log here, try to get a hit versus the prince. Nice. And now I'm going to need to pull off a pretty good defense. I'm going to bomb tower here and then I can go spear gobs like this. Very nice. And this should be a really, really easy defense. He goes for the zap, but that's not going to do anything. I'm just going to keep going aggressive. And also with the spending little elixir on defense because of the king tower activation, you can go aggressive much more often. Oh, what? <laughs> uh, I don't know what that fireball was. I'll just magic archer here and then go for the tornado. Okay, I can wall breakers up top as well just to kite that. Oh, no, I can't. <laughs> but yeah, like I was saying, though, I feel like a big mistake people make are not doing the wall breaker kites enough. Obviously, you want to do them correctly, unlike I did right there, but... When you kite correctly with the wall breakers, you're defending while attacking because when they kite, they're not actually going to die. So they're just going to pull everything into the middle, into all three towers and damage your tower, giving you some nice trades. I'll see you guys in the next match. I'm in the next match here against this guy. Another mistake I feel like people make with this deck quite often is just not being confident in yourself on defense. And what I mean by that is like people are aggressive, but... You need to be sometimes way more aggressive than you think you need to be. And you just need to be confident that you're able to, def to defend. Obviously, thinking that you can defend won't actually make you defend. But I just mean like knowing that you can defend while being down a significant amount of elixir helps a lot with this deck. You just need to know what you can and can't defend here. I'm just going to knight at the bridge because I know if I do much more, I won't be able to defend. But if I do just a knight... I should get enough elixir out or even if he does ignore it, I'll still be able to defend pretty easily because I have already gotten the king tower activated. By the way, what do you guys think about the new emote in the shop? I think it's probably one of the best emotes they've ever came out with. I feel like it's a lot of fun to use, but the only problem with it is that, for me at least, in Canada, it's $7. Like, $7 for an emote is kind of ridiculous. I mean, maybe if it was like 500 gems, I'd understand, but it has to be like actually $7 out of your like bank account instead of like just being $7 worth of gems, which I find that completely ridiculous. I actually talked to Supercell about it. Um, cause now that I'm like a super creator, I can tell them about my like opinion and stuff personally. And I did just feel like that was a, a little bit crazy. Like $7 for an emote, like from your own money is like ridiculous. You have no way to earn it in game for free. You just have to just spend $7. And I don't know if they did that on purpose or what, because it is one of the funniest emotes and I really, really like to use it. It has a funny noise to it, but $7 for an emote is just ridiculous. I might give away a few of those emotes. What do you guys think about that? I could just give away the emote, I guess. Maybe like uh, two or three times. I'm not really sure. 
because I know a lot of people don't really want to spend money on an emote. Spending money on an emote is a little bit crazy. Like, I don't know, especially $7 for just one of them. Maybe if you got like quite a few of them, but only one for seven. I, I don't know about that. I'll just spear gobs the bridge here and then magic archer in the back. With this deck, it's always important to set up an early magic archer on defense because usually you want to get to two of them depending on what they have. I'll just minor wall breakers here into the golem because I know I can still defend either way and it could force out the arrows. Yeah, nice. I'll just knight here in front of this so he can't firecracker on top of my magic archer. I'll just tornado log it to death. Nice. That knight, which is pretty much dead too. I'll just bomb tower here in the middle to pull everything. What? <laughs> okay, I'll minor on defense. Um, I could get a really nice tornado here. Actually pull everything to the bomb tower. And this is the value of the king tower right there. Look at that king tower just hitting everything all the time. And nothing got to my tower. Not a single tick of damage. Can just go for the second magic archer. And that's the power of the second magic archer and wall breaker kite. I feel like these tips are probably the most important tips to becoming good at this deck, and I really like this deck as well. This deck is so much fun. It's probably one of my favorite decks of all time. I've always had a great time playing with it. I'll see you guys in the next match. I'm in the next match here against this guy. Just going to go for my Knight in the back here. I want to get to my Evolve Knight pretty early. My favorite two starting plays with this deck are Knight in the back and Wall Breakers in the back. Um, I'm not exactly sure which one is best anymore, to be honest, because... Getting to your evolution is so good, but splitting your wall breakers is also so much pressure. Okay, I'll just Magic Archer here on top of the Tesla. I do think it's 3.0 Expo, so I'd rather Magic Archer the Tesla than the Knight, because if I Magic Archer the Tesla, then he kind of had to respond like that with the Archers. I'll just log here on top of this, try to push it to the Spear Gob so I don't take any damage, hopefully. If I just Magic Archer the Knight, then he would have Archered on the Magic Archer and then just Expoed immediately immediately with the knight and he'd also have a tesla down so it would just be very bad he can get an easy defense here but it's okay i am one knight away from my evo if he goes for the expo i should be fine so i think i can just confidently cycle my knight in the back i'm not really worried because i do have the bomb tower plus tornado i think i could bomb tower spears though to make sure he doesn't tesla straight away okay he knights and then i can just tornado it backwards this is my favorite play with a uh, minor wall breakers you just bomb tower and then you tornado their tank backwards and they couldn't do anything about it so the only choice they have is to play their building okay all wall breakers here behind this knight he could just log but maybe i could snatch like one hit nah he did the skeletons which was good by him okay i can just log here okay i do have a question for you guys i don't really know um who to ask this to it's kind of like an awkward question so i'm just gonna ask you guys here um well, also, I don't really share much about my personal life, but I guess you guys are going to hear a bit about me right now. Um, My dog passed away, like, I want to say six days ago, and my parents, like, for Christmas, like, obviously at Christmas time, everyone asks, like, what do you want for Christmas? What do you want for Christmas? That kind of thing. And my parents, they want a dog. Like, they want, like, they said, like, it would, like they want a dog because, like, I get my family Christmas presents, obviously. And I thought it was, like, kind of weird because, like, Christmas is in like, I want to say like 12, 13 days. It, no, it's, it, it's, it's in like 13 days and getting a new dog like three weeks, four weeks after your dog passed away is kind of weird. Like, get, like it's like, it would be a total of like three weeks. Like, do you guys not think that's weird? Like, I don't really know how to tell them that I don't want a new dog because like, obviously like it's their gift, but at the same time, it's like, it's also like going to be like around me all the time. And I feel like it's just kind of weird to like get a new dog, like three weeks right after your dog passes away like i feel like that's just like a like i i didn't want to say it to them at the time because i thought it was like kind of like rude or maybe disrespectful or not what they wanted to hear but like i feel like that's just like a grieving thing like get, getting a new dog that quickly just like grieving and not exactly like wanting a new dog in its own so i just feel like the best like that is not like the best thing at all is to get a new dog because i feel like it's out of um, emotion and not what they actually want okay i'm gonna knight here but yeah please let me know down below what you guys think because i don't really know how to like bring it up or how to say it but i really don't want that i guess but i also don't want to say that like i won't get them something you know what i mean well not that i won't get them something but that like i won't get them that i guess kind of thing so yeah please let me know down below and i'll see you guys with the next match Okay, I'm in the next match here against Abby 17 Okay, he has a Skeleton Barrel. I'll just Bomb Tower in the middle. Skeleton Barrel's kind of bad. I feel like Skeleton Barrel needs a buff. I, like, rarely face Skeleton Barrel, and whenever I do, I'm just kind of smiling because I know the deck's going to be trash or it's just going to be an easy win. Skeleton Barrel's just a really, really bad card, and I feel like it hasn't got a significant buff in quite a long time, and 
it's like just actually like extremely bad like i thought goblin braille was bad and then you see the skeleton braille and you're like wow that card is terrible and never connects to the tower okay i can activate my king tower here and then go for my knight pretty nice uh king tower activation there oh wall breakers behind this too just to pressure him a bit more because he is a bit low on elixir he spent a lot right there yeah he has to eat that knight pretty nice damage there on the left side Okay, there's a skeleton barrel again. Like, I'm not worried at all right now. Like, who's worried about a skeleton barrel? I'll just mine her straight away. Just not worrying about the skeleton barrel at all. <laughs> that card needs a huge buff, dude. I feel like it needs to either, like, be more impactful when it connects to the tower or connect to the tower more often. Because as of right now, that card is never getting to the tower. Very nice wall breaker connection there as well. Pretty nice elixir counting knowing that he didn't have enough to defend the wall breakers with anything. Okay. We're probably just going to reset here. Oh, never mind. I can just tornado on the goblin barrel because I do have bomb tower for the hog rider. He's just playing like a hog rider two barrels deck. <laughs> kind of a crazy deck, but I kind of like it. Kind of props to this guy for playing this deck. Bait's not really that great in the meta. And then putting like a random weird hog rider in it doesn't really make it too much better. I'll just spear gobs at the bridge here. He does have the evil firecracker, so I'll have to be careful of that. It's going to bait out some spells. Oh, bomb tower here. Yep. And all that's just going to die to a bomb tower. <laughs> Look at the power of the skeleton barrel. Oh, wall breakers here with this too. Just try to force out the arrows. Okay, he goes for the goblin gang. I'll just tornado it away. Just try to make sure I finish it off. Okay, I can magic archer the bridge here. Try to take the tower because I don't think you'll be able to react in time. Yeah, nice. Because the Valkyrie was so close that you couldn't really react. I'll just mine around the evil firecracker here. I just want to take care of it. A oh, bomb tower on the hog rider as well. Okay. Really bad skeleton barrel. Oh, wall breakers in pre-log for the goblin gang. Oh, he arrows, so he can't afford the goblin gang. I can spear gobs as well. This deck has, like, some of the best defense ever. Like, it's not easy defense when you play with this deck, but if you play the defense to its potential, it's so good. Like, it's really hard to break through this deck, especially with a deck like this you're never getting through. Obviously, against this deck, it makes it look effortless and easy because honestly, it kind of is. Like, these decks are just not good against my deck, but I'll see you guys in the next match. I'm in the next match against this guy. Okay, I barely got my knight down there. I was trying to start the recording. Okay, this guy's an interesting clan named Hog, my god. <laughs> I'm just going to take a wild guess and assume he's a hog rider player. Okay, I'll just go for my minor plus spear gobs here on the right. He did waste a barbarian barrel. Okay, this guy's a little bit of a crazy deck. Yeah, this deck looks like a huge mid-ladder deck. I could just activate my King Tower off that Firecracker with the Bomb Tower. Really important to get those King Tower activations. Oh, and I'm going to get a nice defense here on the left too. I'll just log on that Prince. Then I can go for the Knight on top of the Executioner. Nice. P pretty good start so far. He didn't get any damage really, and I did get my King Tower up. Activating King Tower with this deck early is always a great sign that you're going to do well in the game because... Once you get the King Tower up, it's really hard for almost all decks to break through. Obviously, if they have, like, RG or, like, Lava Hound or something like that, activating the King Tower is good, but not too great. Oh, and there's an RG. <laughs> oh, Miner like this. Hopefully, it pulls the Bandit. I think it could. Nice. What a nice Miner. I'll just log here, too, and that Miner should prevent that hit. Nice. Let's go. Perfect defense right there. I can Wall Breakers immediately on the right because he has to defend the Miner Spears, and now he shouldn't be able to defend the Wall Breakers. Perfect elixir counting right there. Let's go. Okay, I'm just going to spear gobs here like, oh, never mind. I have to go for the knight and then spear gobs on top of the prince. I don't want the knight to die. Okay, the prince is getting targeted by the tower now, so I think the knight's going to die anyways. But, okay, I have to miner on defense. Please get down. Oh, okay, wow. I almost thought that wouldn't get down for a second. I'm really happy it did get down. This guy should be really low on elixir. He was spamming everything the entire match so far, so... If I'm this low, he should be quite low as well. Okay, he RGs the bridge as soon as he hits six. I would wall breakers to right to finish off the tower, but it is hitting double. Okay, I'll wall breakers now since he did go for the barbarian barrel. I'll just tornado this and then I can go for my spear goblins. If I spear goblins log, it should get one hit, but it's okay. Yeah, he firecrackered, so it might get two, but it should only get one. Nice. I can just go for my knight here. And I could just minor wall breakers right now. He shouldn't have anything good for it. He has no arrows and no barb barrel. Just gonna minor wall breakers. Have my nato ready for anything. Okay, what? Has he used the goblins? I swear he hasn't used them yet. Oh, spear goblins plus bomb tower on defense. Bomb tower is so good against RG. And he missed his arrows. He could have hit the bomb tower there. This guy is a little bit lost. I feel bad. <laughs> oh, wall breakers on the right. Prediction tornado the goblins away. Nice. What? 
Okay, I feel like I really deserve the hit there, but it's okay. Oh, minor plus... Nah, I'll Spear Goblins now. Then I can just wait. I think that's going to connect. He's pretty low on uh, Elixir. Okay, I don't even need the Magic Archer. I'll just log Wall Breakers and then get to my Tornado. GG's. Very nice win. Thank you guys for watching. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.